here, 775. Back on another. This is post Hurricane Helene. And anybody that we had <laughs> was considering doing a system said yes after Helene. So we've got like 22 jobs, generators, solar systems, just trying to keep keep on and going. So um, anyway, I'm gonna do a separate storm video, how to prep your system. We did so much during the hurricane to make sure systems were fine tuned. Found out a lot about different products, different batteries, and uh, really the the weakness, I guess, in a lot of things is keeping the knowing how to use your generator with your system during a long-term outage. We'll cover that. But anyway, we're going to put up a 42-panel ground mount here, and uh, we're going to be running this house house on the hill. And uh, mech room is up there. We're about 350 feet away. Uh, we got a really nice solar window here facing south is like that away. So we just got on site, just getting started. Uh, we're just gonna, we got a whiteboard full of installations. Very grateful for it. And we're just gonna, just gonna get to work. See how it goes. All right, and up here is the bottom end, even though it's above where we're working. That's what we call the bottom end, doing all the AC work. Our mech room is going to be, it's going to be in here in this garage. We're going to take all these shelves off, claim some real estate, batteries, inverter, gutters. Panel is on the other side of this. All right, post pounding is going very well. We got uh, two more to go. Nice place to work, real nice soil. Pounded those in about 10 minutes. But I got a delivery. I got to run back to the house to unload 10 generators. So anyway, break time. All right, got all the purlins on. So uh, about three and a half hours to Set up, get here, pound the posts, build the rack. Three and a half hours. Not too bad. We're going to go back and regroup, get rid of the driver. And I need to skiss here to do that. And then we'll reload and put solar panels on that trailer. We've got some batteries to bring and the excavator. So I'll load batteries on there, excavator, solar panels for our next run tomorrow. Get this thing paneled. And then we got a 320 foot trench around the corner of the house into the mech room. It is located, Let's clear that. And our usual, so it's just an amazing spot here. He'll be just cranking all day long. It's slightly canted le uh, west, azimuth, about five degrees west. They're just the uh, air conditioner here in the afternoon or what usually the heaviest load so got to tilt it over just a little bit 30 degrees fixed tilt Sinclair bulletproof we're back just finished racking the glass and got some conduit started there we've got Tony in my excavator finishing up I got I was digging up at the house and I gotta go I gotta I gotta go someplace else so I'm gonna leave these guys to do dig and get this pipe in We'll be back tomorrow. All right, single 15K and a stack of Gigastacks. Rubik's Gigastacks. We've really enjoyed these batteries. Enjoy working with James Mast up in Millersburg, Ohio. And uh, I like these 42 panel arrays. They're just wired nicely with a 15K, very balanced. And uh, 28s and 42s if they're 450 watt. Panels make really nice stringing. So, again, a lot of people, they're always talking about their panels, but the inverter's the hub that drives the stringing. In my opinion, you should just, the design is all around the inverter. All right, we're back day three. Finish up this trench. And the guys don't understand why I love raking. So, uh, <laughs> I just like putting the trench back. It's one of my favorite brain dead things to do is to get on this machine, listen to tunes or Bible studies, and just fill in ditches 
and they don't understand why I like it so much. They think I'm weird. Right, Willis? Yeah. <laughs> so I said, give me that rake. Don't touch my rake. So I like to make sure the ditches are packed. And the beauty of the machine is the bucket is the same width as my track. So I can sit right in that track while I'm filling and pack it in nicely. Cause I'm gonna come back here in six months and not see a trench. So just a little bit anal about it. Just a little bit, just don't ask these guys because they think I'm very, very weird. So anyway, I do enjoy it. I don't have to think. I don't have to design anything, connect anything. I just get to use my favorite tool. Well, two of them, my Yammer and the rake. So, <laughs> oh man. So we got pretty much this backfilled up to the pull box. They're pulling in the string now. Our favorite, favorite electrician trick. Willis is down there 350 feet away, vacuuming in the string that James is holding. Hopefully when it stops, he means he's got it. I don't know if you can see Willis. He looks a little wee down there. So he just sucked that string in there. And now we'll pull the mule tape back from down there. So, whoops, a little too much zoomage. And then we'll, uh, I yeah, guess, right. he's got the mule tape, yep. And then we're gonna pull our strings in. We have 42 panels combined in series parallel seven and 14 always got to put a ground in there there's a little bit of debate going on about that but i'm not going to bring that up but there should be a according to nec code a ground in your path between your array and your equipment so oh the gutter came back down so we're also one of the one of the not so fun tasks is is getting all the holes and not forgetting any there's one for the solar and getting all the back and forth for the AC and the power distribution blocks and all that stuff's got to be punched in this gutter so you got to kind of do a layout do all your pilot holes and then bore through the brick thankfully it's only a veneer of brick today sometimes we got to go through brick and block and that's not fun okay all right, so now he's going to pull the pull string back so we can pull the mule tape in. Mule tape is awesome. I think this is only 1,200. I've seen 1,800. This is 1,200 pound pull strength. It's good for pulling people out of ditches, too. All right, we've got to put some micro airs on these babies, to soft start these beasts, and we're going to rebuild all of this. This is kind of, whew, kind of ugly. We gotta put a wiring trough here and a wiring trough there. Some pipes in between. We got a couple of panels to run, circuits to move. Kind of the usual generator hookup. So I'm gonna put these two chunky little two foot outdoor troughs and that should be able to handle. Oh, he did get those. How did you see that? Look at, we got our back and forth. This always pays to put an extra. All right, we're wrapping up this job today. We have done our testing. We've done our, we just did our generator test and that worked really well. This has been super important for the storms we've been experiencing, making sure your generator's in good shape from a battery standpoint to testing to the settings in the inverter. And so we just did that and we're able to load up and charge the, charge the battery and run the loads in the house. That's a nice little setup there. That's on propane, works well, but we want to minimize the use of that but we do rely on it in a long-term outage. We just had a couple places that were out of power for a couple weeks. We gotta know that that works. All right, our usual, the required AC disconnect for our system. So the power flow from the meter base um, to the disconnect to our bypass inside, I'll show you, and the inverter. So like we usually do, there's usually, we show up and there's a lot of circuits that are on the grid that we, the customers want to have off grid. and. Usually you're going to find condensing units. You'll find breakers for them outside. You'll find well pumps outside. Um, this also had a sub-feed 100 amp circuit to a shed. So we took all of those and moved them over to a new panel. So there's a 100 amp sub-feed to a shed over there. 
and then these condensing units are now powered off of that panel. So why do we do that? So when the power goes off, you're not really, you, you can't, anything that's in here is not going to work. So we set up another panel and we tie that in with the house panel with our power distribution block. We went with these two 12 inch gutters so we could get by the, um, and run three pipes in here to get by the downspout. And then there's a change in the house foundation here. This is an add on garage. So just kind of do some custom, custom gutters to make that work. We're gonna add some micro air soft starts now to these HVAC units. Our solar is coming in from 350 feet away down there. Interesting, came back here. This is, I think I put these in 14, 15 years ago for this customer, a little simple rain barrel. <laughs> 15 years ago, gosh, I'm getting old. There's another one on that corner of the house. So I've uh, known this customer for a long time. Finally convinced him to put solar on his house. I think the last hurricane really did it. Um, anyway, so then in here, we've got a 15K and a stack of gigastacks. I'll show you that. So we're running now, just turned it on. Running nicely, got all the settings right. We're connected to the Wi-Fi. We've got a power distribution block inside here. Like I said, that's gonna, that feeds that panel on the outside and also feeds the main house panel here. We also, because he had an interlock kit with a generator, we ended up using uh, Polaris lugs to kind of land on those conductors and take that over to the generator inlet of the Solark 15K. So that allows us, as I just did, a generator test so we're good there. Our typical bypass, we're on the solar now, not using any grid. And then the gigastacks are charging up nicely. About 24 amps going in. We started at 50. We're up to 66 already. So that's that, running the whole, whole house right now. Not using any grid power. And just going to add those microwares as a wonderful soft start accessory and I think that that's a wrap on this job so um, we've got <laughs> a bunch to do thankfully we're loaded up with work about 10 generators and 12 solder jobs lined up on the whiteboard so trying not to kill everybody but we got to get to work so we're gonna put that driver to work and trench in we're off to Alabama next, I think. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna, Willis is working on putting the microwave on and they were backlogged and uh, waiting on some to come in the mail today and hopefully we can get this other one done. That's the last thing. Last piece of the puzzle is to start these. This is a four ton, this is a three ton and it makes a huge difference when there's no grid to be able to start those units. So if you need help, let us know. Again, we do full installs. This is a full turnkey install. We do some partial DIY helper systems and we also we just shipped a bunch of stuff to an installer up in North Carolina um, and we do the design and permit packages for everything. So all right I think that's that's another wrap. We're just waiting on the inspector and that's it. This is Engineer 775 signing off.